Hello again, friends. Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional, Something Deeper. It is Tuesday, so thanks for joining me. Just today, let's talk about how great God is and how it's so plain to see just from the creation that he has made. Isaiah, in his 40th chapter, talks about God and how he is incomparable to anything else. And so he talks about how God is far above we human beings. And he talks about idols that we make, the false gods that that they would carve out of wood or out of metal. And he talks about how they'd have to make it very carefully so that they'd have a, a flat base so that they wouldn't fall over. You really don't want your God to be wobbly and have to fall over all the time and if if they are unstable then they have to make chains to hold them up because they can't even stand up on their own and how do you compare the god of this universe to those false gods and then he goes on in verse 21 to say do you not know have you not heard has it not been told you from the beginning have you not understood since the earth was founded he sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. Isaiah goes on to talk about all the the greatest rulers of the world are nothing compared to God. Verse 23 and following, He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, No sooner do they take root in the ground than he blows on them, and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name because of his great power and mighty strength. Not one of them is missing. A lot of people have had a real religious experience being out in the wilderness at night and looking up and seeing the thousands and thousands of stars that are just visible by the naked eye. And then to find out that in this universe there's probably a hundred billion galaxies that we can see through telescopes and every one of them has about a hundred billion stars in them and we realize this is a big universe and it was created by a big God. All we have to do is look around us and we see the glory of God all around us. Now, when you talk about creation showing the power and glory and majesty of God, some people will insultingly say, well, that's just a God of the gaps theology. What they mean by that is that God is just what people use as an explanation when we don't understand things. In the olden days when uh, a plague would go through a city, then they would say, oh, well, God's mad at us, so that's why we're all dying from this plague. But once we figure out that there's bacteria that can cause illnesses and viruses, then we don't have to use God as an explanation for that anymore. And, And their idea is that as science progresses, we'll need God as an explanation less and less, and our God will get smaller and smaller. But I don't believe in the God of the gaps. I believe that what we see in creation shows the glory of God. In fact, the more we understand it, the more glorious he is. I think when we see what we see through the Hubble telescopes, we see a greater universe than we knew of. And now we have the James Webb Telescope, and we're seeing even greater things. And it's, it's putting into question a lot of the theories they've had about astrophysics. And, and that's a good thing because we're learning more about the creation. But the more we learn, the more amazing the creator who made it all is. We may know now that the sun is a thermonuclear nuclear f- furnace, that it is taking hydrogen atoms and fusing it into helium, and that that is causing all the energy to be blasted out of the sun that provides warmth and life for all of us. Well, is that a, is that a God of the gaps? 
Or is it amazing that God has put this thermonuclear uh, furnace in space and we're trying to do nuclear fission and we find out it's very, very difficult to create those conditions. But God created it. And because of that, we have all the building blocks that we need of for life. So I think the more we understand, the more we see in the cell and see the, the tiny little proteins that have to interact together and form little tiny machines, the more amazing it is that God created this universe. When we even go down to subatomic particles and realize that the basic building blocks of this universe were created so that hydrogen could fuse into helium and make great power and light up the night sky and then also give warmth to the earth through the sun. All of that was built into this universe by the one who made it. Psalm 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the works of his hands. And so the more we see of creation, the more amazing God is. So Isaiah says, Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all of these? He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. But I think a lot of people who reject God don't reject him on the basis of there's not enough evidence in this universe. A lot of them, it's a choice because they're upset with God. Somehow their life has been traumatized. Things have happened in their life that they don't like. And so it makes them angry at God. And so the, the best they can do is proclaim that he doesn't exist. Isaiah goes on to talk about that. In verse 27, he said, Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So look up to the heavens. See the amazing creation that God has put into place. Look at the lives of those around you. Realize what God has wrought. And realize that, yes, life can be difficult, but we can go to this God who has made all these magnificent things and trust that we can wait on him, we can hope in him, and he will renew us, and we will soar on wings like eagles. We can trust a God like that. He is powerful, and he is also a loving God. God is great, and God is good. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for this reminder of your greatness and your goodness. We thank you, Father, you are powerful enough to take care of us and to help us. Thank you that you love us enough that you are willing to do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I love you, and we will see you tomorrow night for Bible study, Lord willing.